Welcome to the session on clause number 5 of ISO IEC 17025-2017. Title of the clause is Structural Requirements. This clause is divided into seven subclauses and defines the basic organizational components of a laboratory, its range of activities, and commitment to an effective management system. Clause 5.1 requires that the laboratory needs to be recognized as a legal entity so that it can be held responsible for its activities. Whenever laboratory is a part of a large organization, then it shall be defined as an integral part of an organization that is legally identified. This may be in the form of a document from the authorities with a verification of the laboratory's existence as a legal entity or its relation to the parent organizations. It may vary from country to country. Subclause 5.2 needs a laboratory to identify the management who is overall responsible for laboratory operation. Here management means the person or group of people who directs and controls a laboratory operation at the highest level. Subclause 5.3 states that laboratory shall define the range of activities to be covered under accreditation scope as per ISO IEC 17025. The scope shall not include any externally provided laboratory activities on an ongoing basis. This means that the laboratory is expected to be accredited for activities for which it is competent to perform by utilizing its own resources only. Additionally, the accreditation scope shall be documented. Subclause 5.4 says that laboratory activities under the scope of accreditation shall be conducted in a way to meet requirements of ISO IEC 17025-2017, requirements of customers, requirements of regulatory bodies and any other organizations providing recognition, if any. Additionally, laboratory is responsible for all its activities under the scope performed at its permanent facilities at sites away from its permanent facilities, mobile facilities or at a customer's facility. Subclause 5.5 explains the requirements on organizational structure, roles and responsibilities and range of documented procedures. The laboratory shall define its organizational structure. It shall depict the relation between various position holders in the laboratory. In case, if it is a part of a bigger organization, its place in the parent organization shall be clarified. The laboratory shall also define roles and responsibilities, authorities of laboratory personnel whose activities are directly or indirectly affect the validity of the result. Finally, the standard does not prescribe any list of documents to be maintained. However, leaves it to the discretion of the laboratory to decide considering the potential risk of operational consistency and validity of the result. As per the subclause 5.6, laboratory personnel shall have authorities and appropriate resources. 1. To implement, maintain and improve the laboratory management system. 2. To identify deviation from management system requirements or from defined procedures while performing the laboratory activities and to initiate the action to prevent or minimize these deviations. 3. To report laboratory management on the performance of laboratory management system and provide opportunities for improvements to the laboratory management system. 4. To ensure the effectiveness 
of laboratory activities. As per the sub clause 5.7, laboratory management shall ensure that there is clear communication on 1. Effectiveness of laboratory management system. 2. Importance of meeting customer requirements, regulatory requirements, and any other applicable requirements to the laboratory. 3. Maintaining the integrity of the laboratory management system during any plan changes.